Hello, in this lecture we are going to discuss the data analysis function used in MATLAB. So let's begin. So first we are going to discuss the maxima and minima functions that are widely used in MATLAB. So the first function we have got is max and this function is used to find the largest value in a vector. For example, on the right hand side you can see the vector x is defined with elements 1, 5 and 3 and the maximum value the max function finds the maximum value 5 and if you define a matrix like here then it will return the result like it will return the maximum value in each column for example in the first column the maximum value is 2 and here we have got this 2 in the answer in the second column 5 is the largest value and in the third column 6 is the greatest value so you can use this max function either to find the largest value in a vector or in a matrix here in the second function we have used two variables before the max function so basically these two variables are used to save the largest value and the location of that largest value for example if it is used to find the largest value in a vector like x equal to 153 then the largest value is saved in the variable a and the position of the largest value will be saved in variable b so the variable a contains the largest value and variable b contains the position of that largest value and similarly if you define a matrix instead of a vector then the variable a contains multiple values multiple maximum values of each column and variable b contains multiple positions of that maximum value here we have got the function max xy and by using the max function in this way and defining the two variables inside a function then what will happen that if you are defining two matrices then the answer will be written containing maximum values of matrix x and maximum values of matrix y similarly the minimum function finds the minimum value in a vector or in a matrix and here we have defined two variables a and b and and they are working a similar that we have already discussed and the variable a contains the minimum value and variable b contains the location of that minimum value and the last one is the minimum xy and if we have defined two different matrices then the results will be two like the minimum value of matrix x and minimum values of matrix y here we have got the exercise questions and they are very simple and here we have to find the maximum value in each column that is you have to use the max function and then in question 2 you can easily find out that in which row that maximum value occurs then the third question is what is the maximum value in each row and for that you have to transpose the matrix you have to use the transpose keyword or transpose function in question 4 we have to find that in which column does the maximum occur and in question 5 we have to find the maximum value of the entire column so this is also very simple you have to find the maximum value of each column first and then you have to save that vector into a variable then again you have to use the maximum or max function to find the maximum value of the entire table for example i show you here i define a simple matrix like this and I have defined a 3 by 3 matrix now I will use the max keyword max a 
and I will save the maximum values into a variable b and here we have got the maximum value of each column now I have got an array now again I will use the max function max b and here I have got the maximum value in the whole matrix the next table we have got is the averages and here we have got mean median and mode using the mean function we can compute the mean value in a vector or mean value of each column in a matrix like here in the example we have got the vector x and by using the mean function we can calculate the mean of the entire vector and here we have got the answer 3 similarly if we define a matrix then the mean function will calculate the mean of every column like the mean of 1 and 2 is 1.5 5 and 4 is 4.5 and 3 6 is 4.5 so here we have got three results the next function is the median and this function is used to find the median value of any vector or in a matrix like here in the example the median value is 3 and in the matrix here it is defined 3 by 3 matrix and the median value in each column is defined here 2 5 and 4 the third function is the mod and this function is used to find the most occurring value in a vector or in a matrix so here in a vector the mod is 3 as you can see here the 3 is occurred twice so the mod of x is 3 and these are the exercise question related to mean median and mod and these are very simple and you can do it the next table we have got is sum and product and by its name sum is used to sum all the elements in a vector or it also sums the each column of a matrix like here the sum of vector x is 9 and if we have defined a matrix then it will calculate the sum of each column of a matrix like here we have got three results 399 nine. the next is the product and it computes a product of the elements in a vector or each column of a matrix the cumulative sum computes the cumulative sum of a vector and also of a matrix like here in the example you can see the cumulative sum of vector x is 1 6 and 9 1 plus 5 is 6 and 6 plus 3 is 9 here is the cumulative product and it computes the cumulative product of a vector or each column of a matrix on the right hand side we have got the sorting functions and this function is used to sort the elements of a matrix or any vector so here we have got the vector and it sorts the vector 1 3 5 and similarly each column of a matrix is sort by using this sort function in the ascending order and if we use the sort x descend then it will sort the function in the descending order sort rows function sorts the row according to the rules so by using this syntax you will sort your matrix according to the elements of the first column like here you can see in the example we have got the matrix and you can see that the first column contains 3 1 and 4 elements so the second row will move to the top and the first row will come at the second so by using this function you will sort your mat elements of the first column and here at the end we have got a function sort row xn so here in this function you are defining your matrix along with the column according to which you have to sort your matrix so here you can see in the example we have got the matrix X and we have also defined the column according to which we have to sort our rows so here in this example we have sort the rows according to the column number 2 so here you can see the first row contains element 1 then 3 and 9 so in this way you can use these functions in your programs here we have got the size functions the size function we have already discussed in our previous lecture so size function is used to determine the number of rows and columns of a matrix 
and you can also save your number of rows and columns into one variable so here we have defined variable a and b the land text determines the largest dimension of a matrix like if a matrix contains two rows and three columns then the answer that it will return is three and using the num el function and by using the num el function it will determine the total elements contained in a matrix so here you can see the matrix containing two rows and three columns the total elements is six and here we have got the exercise questions related to these functions that we have discussed so i hope you can do it and if you face any issues in solving these questions you can ask me in the comment and i will be always there to answer you here we have got the statistical functions and the first one is the standard deviation and here we have calculated the standard deviation of the vector x and similarly you can find the standard deviation of a matrix and here we have calculated the standard deviation of each column and here we have got three answers and there are three standard deviation of three columns the second one is the variation and you can calculate the variation of the whole vector or any matrix and these are the exercise questions related to standard deviation and variance so that's it and i hope you have understood the data analysis functions that are used in matlab so if you have any doubt or any questions related to this lecture you may ask me in the comment section so thanks for watching and see you in the next one